just lift up your voice and lift up your hands right fast? And can we just bless the name of the Lord in this house? Can we do that together? Can we just bless the name of the Lord in this place? He is worthy of all praise this morning. Lord, we bless you today. We glorify your name today, Jesus. Thank you for what we feel in this room today, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We lift up the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you today, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Lord, we bless you today. Bless your name, bless your name, bless your name. Just a few quick announcements. Homecoming is coming up October the 18th. We're going to have the Littles with us that morning. We will be having dual services like we typically do, but we are foregoing the meal afterwards of homecoming this year just because of the fact that we felt it best to do that to keep people from being on top of one another. And, and I know that we are still all fearful, but hopefully it looks like the projected date may be after homecoming before we start establishing one service again. I'm ready, amen, to move on with life in the name of Jesus. Anybody else like that too, amen? But we, we're just, we're trying to be patient. We're trying to be careful. We don't want an outbreak, but we rebuking that mess in Jesus' name all along the way, amen, amen. <laughs> Also, October the 24th at 11 a.m., there is a sign-up sheet out in the foyer on the table to the right where the chairs are. Ashley does, Ashley Williams and his family do Saturday church. This is feeding homeless and different stuff like that. Everything is out there in the foyer. Would you please go by and check that out and sign up and be there with us October the 24th at 11 a.m.? We are accepting donations now for our Thanksgiving outreach. If you would, you don't even have to put your name on it. If you would just simply write turkey on the tithe envelope when you fill it out. No, we're not calling you a bunch of turkeys, but we want to designate that that goes to turkeys and Thanksgiving outreach. So just write turkey on the tithe envelope and we'll know what it's for. We'll, yes, we'll know that you're a bunch of turkeys, but that's just beside the point. It just is what it is. Amen, amen. And then, go ahead, babe. Ladies, I'm, I'm going to see y'all tonight at 6 o'clock in the sanctuary, right? Right. We're going to continue our series, Armor of God, our Bible study that we've been doing for the past several weeks. I've heard so many awesome testimonies, and I can't wait to keep hearing more. I'm excited about it, ladies. I'll see y'all tonight. Bring a friend. Amen. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, getting it? Isn't it good to be here? Amen. All oh, y'all smiling faces. It's so good to see you. Amen. 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 Glad to see the Williams clan back there holding it down. Amen. I love Tracy and Brother David. They're great folks. Thank you so much for being here today. Love all of you. Glad Brother Herschel's here and feeling a little bit better. Amen. He's been struggling with a knee issue, but we're glad that he's here. Praise the Lord. And pass the ammunition. Right, Brother Herschel? Amen. <laughs> But anyway, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Let's continue to pray for Brother Ralph. He is doing some better, but baby steps are better than no steps. So let's continue to pray for him. He is uh, doing some better in the sense of they have turned the oxygen down from 100% on the vent down to 55%. So that is a good thing. They have done dialysis, and it has been able to help alleviate some of the chaos that, that his body was going through as a result of COVID. That's why we are being so careful, because we don't want nobody else to end up in the hospital and go through that too. Amen? Amen. But Sister Brenda and Judy are better. They are out of quarantine. They are doing good. So continue to pray for them. But Brother Ralph really needs a touch from the Lord. So you may get a phone tree message again and us show up to have parking lot prayer meeting again tonight. And if we do, we just do. Amen. Amen. Because we got, if we got to pray him through, let's just pray him through. Amen. 
and that's what we'll do. If you have a need today, would you just raise your hand right where you are? If you are comfortable connecting with the person beside of you, if they're family or whatever, you can do that. Just grab their hand. You know where they've been. If you ain't and you don't like them or you are arguing before you got here, then it's okay. You don't have to connect with them at all. You just say, I don't like you right now and I ain't touching you in Jesus' name. But I love you with the love of the Lord today. Amen? Amen. Let's go before the Lord together in prayer, can we? Father, we love you today. Lord, we bless you and we thank you, God, for all that you're doing in this moment. God, we thank you for how that you're showing yourself strong and showing yourself mighty. God, thank you for what you did in the first service. And Lord, we know that, God, that you're going to replicate that in this service, that you're going to show yourself strong, you're going to show yourself mighty. God, when people move in faith and obedience, you are a rewarder of that. And Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do today. Thank you that you are still Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who is our provider. And Lord, we praise you and we glorify you for that. God, I thank you today that in the name of Jesus, that you are God, Jehovah Rapha. And Lord, we praise you for being our healer this morning. We praise you, O Lord, that you're going before us and healing and ministry and moving like never before. And Lord, we pray right now that in the name of Jesus, that you begin to move in Raph's ICU room, that you would show Show your glory to them. That God, that you would begin to demonstrate with authority and power and begin to heal his body right now in that room. Lord, we know that you can do it. We know that you can move. We know that you can show your glory to or Judy and, and Brenda, Lord. Lord, thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for every need in this room today that you're going to supply. Thank you, God, that every obstacle is going to be removed, that every mountain is going to be made low, and you're going to show your glory today in the mighty and the blessed name of Jesus God supernatural provision is going to happen in this house you're going to provide finances oh Lord you're going to provide healing today God and we thank you for what you're going to do thank you for how you're going to move thank you for how you're going to demonstrate God like never before in this place and Lord we love you and we praise you for it for everything that you're going to do today in Jesus' mighty and holy and precious name, we ask and we pray. And everybody said, amen. Can you just lift up your hands and lift up your voice? And can you thank the Lord one more time for hearing and answering prayer in this service right now? Lord, we bless you today. God, thank you that you hear and answer prayer. Thank you, God, that you are moving and showing yourself strong and showing yourself mighty. Lord, we love you today and we honor you, Father, for all that you're doing. Thank you for hearing and answering prayer, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for moving today. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. And the singer's chorus is there.
wonderful amen aren't you thankful for the name of Jesus this morning can we one more time just collectively lift up the name of Jesus in this house right now can you do that with me can we just lift up the name of Jesus father we love you we bless you thank you for the name of Jesus thank you for what we feel in this room today oh Lord thank you for what we feel in this room today Lord, we bless you and we glorify you, Jesus, for all that you're doing today. In your mighty name. The reason you feel what you feel in this house this morning is because there's been a lot going on at this church all week long. We've had parking lot prayer meetings at Oak Coney and praying for Brother Ralph. Then we've had uh, folks coming every day. It has been awesome to watch every day as people came to this church and I watched as they marched around this church. Some marched around with hands raised, some marched around praying, some marched around with tears streaming down their face. But I know that we all marched around in faith. And let me tell you something, there is something in the atmosphere that God is doing in this church. Because when Leah approached me about this, she didn't know that in the middle of this series that I was going to start called Faith Over Fear that I was going to preach about the very thing that she approached me about this week. Turn with me to Joshua 6. Joshua 6 and verse number 20. Joshua 6 and verse number 20 is where we're going to look at this morning. Joshua 6 and verse number 20. Joshua 6 verse 20. We're going to read two verses of scripture and then we're going to Move on in this thing. It says this. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey, with the edge of the sword. Verse 20 again. Let's read that one more time. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. When the people heard the sound. Can we pray right now together? Father, thank you for what you're about to do in this place. Thank you for how you're going to show your goodness. Thank you for how that you're going to show your might today, O Lord. You are a mighty God and a good God. You are holy, you are righteous, and today we love you. Today we lift you up. God, I thank you that there's some folk that have been coming this week by faith, and they are simply here by faith, God. They've been staring at walls all week, but by faith today, 
walls are going to come down. Thank you, God, for every prayer, for every prayer that's been prayed and every praise that's been sowed into the heavens this week. God, I thank you that there's some folk in here that have sowed some things by faith. And Lord, I thank you that those seeds in the clouds of heaven are going to produce rain today because the clouds are heavy with rain. God, I thank you for what you're about to do in this place and how that you're going to show your might and show your goodness in this house today. Lord, there's some folk that's going to get healed this morning. There's some folks that that came in one way and going to leave a different way. And Lord, we praise you. God, you've given us the city today and we're going to operate by faith. God, thank you for the anointing that we feel in this place. And Lord, I thank you that you're going to cause your word to settle in our heart today. Lord, I receive that anointing now that turns this preacher into your prophet that I may speak what thus is the word of the Lord unto this house. And Lord, we praise you, we glorify you, and we honor you, Jesus, for everything that you're about to do today. In your mighty name, we ask and we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I I don't know about you, but I came today expecting something. Anybody else feel that way? I came expecting something this morning. Starting last week, I began a new series with you talking about faith over fear. Last week, we unpacked Hebrews 11 at the end of Hebrews 11, and we were talking about those who had been tortured and those who had been martyred and sown into and all of that. But the writer of Hebrews does not stop there, but he talks about them and then he says, yet without seeing the promise. And I talked with you about how that they had not even known the promise, but they had simply heard the promise, but they had yet to see it manifest. But all because of their faith in God, they were able to know that the promise was already done because God had spoken it. What I love about the Lord is that when God speaks a thing, we don't have to worry about if it's done or not. When God speaks it, it automatically became done the moment that it proceeded out of his mouth. And so they knew that, that they, they knew that when God spoke a thing, that it was already as if it was done regardless if it had ever manifested or not. Today we're simply going to look at the story of Joshua and the people of Israel and how that they conquered Jericho simply by the help of the Lord. And the only thing that I've simply entitled this particular message in this series is simply Joshua and Jericho because there's really nothing else you can title it. Scriptures declare to us at the beginning of the book of Joshua, it says that there is a transition in leadership. That Moses, being the leader of the exodus, of Israel's exodus, had found himself simply in an awkward spot because of the disobedience that Moses had exhibited. The Bible says that God spoke to Moses and said, Moses, I'm going to provide water for you and the people of Israel, but I simply want you to speak to the rock and water is going to come forth. The Bible says that Moses walked over to the rock and in his frustration with all of the people that were grumbling, and complaining how they had no water that Moses took the staff that was in his hand and struck the rock and when he did water proceeded out of the rock well in that moment God said Moses because of your disobedience I'll allow you to see the promised land but you will never step one foot into the place that I have promised my people the Bible says that God thought so much of Moses that he knew that the people of Israel that if they allowed allowed Moses to be to be seen buried that they would stay there and they would mourn over Moses but God said no I'm gonna Moses you're gonna come up with me in the mountains you're gonna die and I'm gonna prepare a burial for you there you're gonna look into the promised land but you're gonna die there and I'm the one that's going to bury you and you are not going into the promised land. God thought so much of Joshua that the Bible says that God looks at Joshua and he says, Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. You see, we are a lot like Joshua. 
Evidently, Joshua was mourning over Moses because of the fact that he had not seen Moses die. So he did not realize and really know is Moses really dead or not. So God thought so much of him that he had to say, Moses, my servant is dead. We are much like the people of Israel in the fact that we would mourn more over Moses than be excited over the fact of where God was taking them. They would knew, he knew that if they saw Moses be buried, that they would mourn more over their yesterday than be counted faithful for the promise of their tomorrow. I don't know about you, but I don't want to mourn over where we've been. I'm excited about where God's got us going this morning. Amen. And so God then, God knew that he was preparing a leader in Joshua. Joshua was Moses' servant, as we know throughout Scripture. It was Joshua that in Exodus 32, it was Joshua that would be on the mountaintop with Moses. And when they would come down after Moses is given the Ten Commandments, the Bible says that Joshua looks at Moses and says, Moses, I don't know what's going on in the camp. That there's, there's this sound of war that is going on down in the camp, and I don't know what is going on. And he said when he, when he looks down there, they see that there is a golden calf that has been made. And Aaron, who was later called the high priest, that he was the one that would make that golden calf. He was the one that would say, here's the Lord that brought you out of Egypt so that they could worship it. But it was Joshua that would lead the charge to eradicate those that had worshiped at the golden calf. It was also Joshua that when Moses built the tent of meeting on the outside of Israel's camp and God would come down in his glory and would meet with Moses there. It was also Joshua that when Moses would come out of the tent of meeting, that Joshua Joshua would learn how to linger in that moment. Let me tell you something. When you learn how to linger in the presence of the Lord, it is right there in the presence of the Lord where he prepares you for your promise and your destiny. But you cannot be prepared for what he has prepared you for if you don't learn how to linger in his presence. And so he began to learn right there. When he was lingering in the presence of the Lord, he would stay right there. But it was this man, Joshua, that God would appoint because of how he served, because of how he lingered, that God himself would appoint him to lead the people of Israel into the land of Canaan. And so thus he reiterated to Moses, to Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. Moses, my servant is is dead. Joshua, it's a new day. Joshua, it's final. Joshua, you're the man for the job. It's time to move forward. Stop mourning over what's over and what's gone and what's happened. It's time to move forward. It's time to go on. You're the man for the job. Get up off of yourself. Let's go. Let's lead. Let's move forward. Let's do this. Joshua, you are the man. And so Joshua, the Bible said after this moment that God speaks to him several different times in this, in this first chapter that God after this moment begins to speak to Joshua and tells him, Joshua, do not fear. Do not be dismayed. I've called you. Joshua, do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Everywhere that the sole of your foot's going to touch, I've already given you the land. Joshua, the land is yours. All you got to do is go. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. And so Joshua then began to operate in faith. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite verses is Joshua 1 9, where God speaks to Joshua and says, Joshua, have not I commanded you? Do not fear and do not be afraid. What was he telling Joshua? He's saying, Joshua, I can't get you to understand this enough. I've already called you. I've already appointed you. And you don't have to worry about it because I've already given you the land. You don't have to be afraid of the giants. You don't have to be afraid of Jericho. You don't have to be afraid of whatever you come against because I've already given you the land. It's yours, Joshua. Do not be afraid. So Joshua gets all the people together 
And in Joshua chapter 3, the Bible says that he looks at the people and he says, the Lord has already told us we have not been this way before, that we're about to enter a new day. We're about to enter a new era. And he said, the Lord's done spoken that the Ark of the Covenant is supposed to go before us across the river Jordan. And the Bible says they start marching across the river. And as they did, the waters part and they walk across again on dry land. Some have said it was the flooding season of the Jordan River and that's why God parted it because he wanted them to understand that I'm the God that'll bring you through floods in your life, that I'm the God that'll do great things and the glory of the Lord though went across ahead of them. The Bible says that they get there and when they get there, they knew that the first place they were gonna come to was a place called Jericho and Jericho is a place that God was gonna reveal to them whom he was and also whom they were because it's the first place that God wanted them to conquer. It was the first place that God wanted them to overtake because this place was going to send shockwaves through the land of Canaan to announce that Israel is here and God the Lord is on their side. Which brings me to my first point this morning and that is Israel's problem. Jericho, according to, to history and scripture, I yelled too much this morning. I'm sorry, y'all, but I'm going to have to keep drinking some water this morning. It ain't meaning I'm going to preach long, but it is meaning that my throat needs to, some water. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So here's Israel's problem. Jericho is the oldest city in the known world at this time. It is surrounded by a system of walls that created one massive wall. The first wall or the outer wall was approximately six foot thick and many scholars say that history records that it was approximately 20 foot high. The inner wall was approximately 12 foot thick and it was around 30 feet high. Between the walls was a 15 foot, approximate 15 foot wide walkway that they would station centurions on that would be armed for battle with arrows and everything else that when you tried to scale the wall, that before you hit that second wall, that you had to come through the first guard that was there. Israel's problem was that they were about to conquer a city that has huge walls that are extreme that have guards on them that are well equipped, well armed and here is Israel knowing that this city was going to be the first major battle. It is no ordinary city. But Jericho is a stronghold that needed to be conquered because if it was conquered, then it was going to strike fear in the rest of the people of Canaan. If it was conquered, then they would know that the Lord was on the side of Israel. If Jericho was conquered, then everybody around them would know that Israel showed up and that God is going to do great things through Israel and God is going to move on their behalf and God is going to show up strong on the behalf of Israel. Isn't it great to know that every stronghold that the enemy tries to put up against us, that it does not matter because it cannot stand in the presence of the Lord. Matter of fact, let me let you in on a clue today. I don't know what walled city that you are facing. I don't know what issue and how big or how great or how small it is that you are up against. I do know this one thing for you this morning that the Bible declares to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number four. It says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down, for the pulling down of strongholds. Let me tell you this. God has given you everything you need to pull down that stronghold in your life. I don't know what's holding you back and what's keeping you from destiny and keeping you from purpose. But I declare this morning that every wall must fall in the name of Jesus today. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
the height, the thickness, the, the thickness of it and the depth of it. It doesn't matter today as God is greater than any wall. God is greater than anything. God is greater than whatever stands in your way this morning. Hallelujah. And I believe that the Holy Ghost is going to go before you. I believe that the wall of depression is going to fall. I believe that the wall of physical incapability is going to fall and God is going to heal you this morning. I believe that some of you today are going to get phone calls from that lost son or daughter and God is going to show up because a wall is coming down today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We cannot look at the walls or the obstacles as dead ends this morning, but they are opportunities for God to show his greatness in your life today. So not only do you see Israel's problem, but you also see Israel's plan. In Joshua 6 and 2 through 7, the Bible says that God says to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpet. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people with a will shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Then Joshua the son of Nun called the priest and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant. Let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed, march around the city, and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. Can I say this and submit this to you this morning? Humanly speaking, this was the most stupid plan I've ever seen of war in the history of man. Humanly speaking, this was dumb. Humanly speaking. Who in their right mind would march around a fortified city in silence? They had no battering ram. They had no ladders to climb walls. They had no catapults to throw large boulders at the walls to crack them and to make sure that they could make an entrance. What could they hope to accomplish by marching around something for six days in silence? Listen, they were commanded to be silent. They couldn't talk or make any noise. They weren't even allowed to yell at the people on the wall and try to intimidate them. They couldn't do a thing. They were to remain quiet. The only ones who made any noise were the priests that blew the trumpets. And when they blew the trumpets, then they would march around at the blow of the trumpet. The only thing that they knew was that God had given them a promise that if you stay silent and do as I have said to you, that I'm going to make something happen. God had promised them that the walls would fall down if they would simply be obedient. But how? Because it doesn't really seem logical whatsoever. Not at all. Besides all this, think about it this way. They served a God that we serve that can knock down walls at any time he so choose to do it. But he tells them to march around it 13 times in six day, or seven days. And on the 14th time, he tells them, I want you to shout. Once a day for six days, they marched and stayed quiet. The seventh day, they went six times, and on the last time, they were supposed to shout. And here they were. But think about them. They are risking their life. What if the people on the wall sees this and begin to fire arrows down at them? Think about this now. What if, what if the warriors came out and they began to attack them while they're spread out in this long file of lines? 
But at the very least, these people of Jericho were going to be intimidating them, laughing at them. And Israel was about to be the laughingstock. But you know what I love about the Lord? is that he declares to us in Scripture in 1 Corinthians that the things that the world thinks are foolish, God sees them as wise. What I love about Joshua and the people was that God's plan was calling for faith and obedience. And the people of Israel had to trust God again to keep his promises. Even if they didn't know how he would do it. Even when the enemy was trying to, to, trying to intimidate them. Even when they had crossed the Jordan River beforehand. They had to trust God one more time and operate in faith and obedience. As a matter of fact, we see that in Joshua 5, that the divine commander of the captain of the armies of the Lord, that he is standing there with a sword drawn. And Joshua comes to him and says, who are you for? Who are you? Because he thought it was a man of war coming to attack them. He says, who are you for? He says, I'm for neither. He said, I'm the commander of the host of the armies of the Lord. Hallelujah. And Joshua knew then that God was with him. Because he understood that I cannot make one step if you don't go with me. But the Bible tells us that the word Lord, when you begin to look throughout the book, the Joshua 6, the Bible shows us that the word Lord is used 16 times. That God was very much involved in the conflict that was about to ensue. And in chapter in this same chapter that we see this, that in verse 2, that God simply tells Joshua, as we just read, God says to Joshua in verse number 2, he said, I have given Jericho into your hand. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but somebody needs to hear the word of the Lord for them. And the word of the Lord is this. Whatever that city is that is surrounded with great walls that you think is impenetrable and will not come down, I declare to you this morning that God has already given it to you by his hand. That you don't have to operate in fear, but God has already given you the city today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So how is this going to work? Joshua had to do as before. And that was simply obey it and take God at his word. Just as Psalm 20 and verse number 7 says that some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God forever. Maybe when Joshua was marching that he might have had to encourage himself a little bit and say, I remember when we first came over the Red Sea and Moses led us out. I remember, I remember Moses standing on top of the mountain and I remember with hands raised as I led the people of Israel into battle that it was there that God revealed himself as Jehovah in the sea, which is the Lord our banner. I remember when God brought us over the Red Sea and he might have said, I remember when we came to the waters of Merah and the waters were bitter, that it was right there that God revealed to Moses a stick to throw into the pool and it was right there that God made bitter waters sweet and showed us once more that his name is Jehovah Rapha, who is the Lord our healer. He might have said, I got to encourage myself because they're trusting in their guardsmen on the wall. They are trusting in this thick wall, but I'm not trusting trusting in that. I'm trusting in the name of the Lord because it's the name of the Lord that's going to go before me. It's the name of the Lord that I can cling to and run to because the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe. So you see Israel's problem. You see Israel's plan. But last, and this is where I really want to hit at this morning. As you see Israel's praise. Israel marched around once for six days. But on this last day, they had combined all the days together and six times they had began to march all around these walls. But the last time they were about to do something significant that they had not done ever before. This time, unlike the other days of the week, they were about to release a praise. As their praise 
as their praise, as the horns blew and their praise was released, it was going to be something in the atmosphere that was going to cause walls to fall all because they released a sound of praise. Israel, in this instance, they began to learn the power of a praise. They were not just yelling to be yelling, but they were lifting up a sound of praise or a shout. For six days, they had marched in complete silence, maybe as the enemy had tormented them. For six days, they had marched around as the enemy possibly said, you're not coming into the heart of this city. But let me declare something to you. There is something when the church stops being silent and begins to release their sound. There is something that happens that causes shockwaves when the earth, when it begins to hear the church, that has stayed silent for so long begin to lift up a sound of praise and the walls begin to fall and we begin to see as God conquers again. Here they were. And in Joshua 6 and verse 16, the Bible says this. It says, in the seventh time it happened that when the priests blew the trumpets, that Joshua says this to the people. I love this. Shout! For the Lord has given you this city. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but it's time for a shout to go forth out of your mouth. Because the Lord has given you every stronghold. The Lord has given you the city. I don't know what you're battling against. I don't know what you're fighting against. But I'm telling you that if you'll release a sound of praise, that God is going to cause the walls to fall and you're going to see as he brings victory into your life today. Hallelujah. I was at Isaac's house the other night. As they had been doing a little worship service and Tracy and I went, and I said, my Lord, if he don't hush, he's going to preach every bit of my sermon if he don't be quiet. Because he got up talking about a sound being released, that you got to release your sound. I went back and I studied this a little bit more as I knew what I was preaching. And do you know that scientists have discovered a particle which actually makes up the proton, neutrons, and electrons of atoms Did you know that there is this thing and it is called a quark? This little thing, it is made up of subatomic particles. And these subatomic particles actually move up and down. The particles that move up never goes down. The particles that goes down never go up. And they are actually doing this. And they are held together by an electronic force. In other words... They are held together by light. I got to thinking about that and I said, my God, that about makes me want to run all over my office today. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because I started thinking about Genesis chapter 1 where God looked at the earth and the earth was full and void and darkness was hovering over the deeps. And all of a sudden the Bible says that out of God's mouth came a sound. And you know what that sound was? That sound was let there be light and there hasn't stopped ceasing any light yet. That it's still holding these subatomic particles together. Why? Because that's what kind of God we serve. That God never does a thing on the earth earth that is prominent or significant without first releasing a sound. I'm thankful today that God is calling us to release a sound again for the walls to come down today in Jesus' name. Because let me tell you something. When you release your sound of praise up, it causes something to happen to those who hear it. There is something about your praise that is contagious. When you release the sound, it shakes, it stirs, it welcomes, it causes fear to grip the heart of the enemy. It's the reason why the enemy fights us so much with music and fights us so much with praise. 
What you mean, pastor? You got one group that wants this thing. You got another group that wants this. You got another group that wants that. Because the enemy knows if he can get everybody fighting that they won't release a sound of praise because there's something that happens when the church gets together and releases its sound and praise starts going up. Why? Because the enemy fears one thing. He fears worship because he knows when you begin to worship, chains are gonna fall. When you begin to release a sound of praise, walls are gonna come down. Depression's gonna flee. The enemy fears fears one thing and that is the sound of praise because when you begin to lift up a shout of praise God begins to come down he begins to rest among us when you lift up praise the spirit of God begins to show up and the atmosphere starts changing all because of a shout of praise now walls didn't just fall in the Old Testament We see walls fall in the new as well. How do you know that, Pastor? I can't help but think about Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16. Being beaten to a pulp, drugged and thrown in a dungeon and forgotten about. But thank God they were not forgotten about in heaven. Because at the midnight hour, all of a sudden, Paul looks over maybe at Silas or Silas looked over at Paul. I don't know how it happened. I just know that all of a sudden a sound began to go out and walls began to shake. And as walls began to shake, chains started falling down. And when chains started falling down, prisoners started being loosed. You know what that lets me know? That lets me know that when I send up my sound, when I release a shout of praise, that God begins to do things that I never thought God could ever do all because of a praise. I don't know about you any anymore, but I can tell you this, that you're talking to a pastor, that you've got a pastor talking to you as well, that is tired of a church staying quiet, but it's time to release our sound. It's time to lift up the name of the Lord. He is great. He is greatly to be praised, and we can operate with our sound this morning in Jesus' name. Before Leah ever approached me about us marching this week, And with this Jericho challenge, she didn't even know. She had been disobedient for two weeks. As God had been telling her. But you know what? I love it. I love it because God, even in our disobedience, God still knows the right timing and how to move. Because what she didn't know is that in this series that I was going to be preaching this, this morning, after she has led people all week long, as they had marched around this church in silence. She didn't know that. So this morning, we're going to do something crazy after we pray in a minute. And that's have a little march inside of the church building for those that can. If you cannot march, just stand up or sit down if you're incapable of standing for a long period of time and just lift up both hands just to say in faith, Because if you would notice in Scripture, it was the mighty men of valor that went out and did the marching. All of the people did not go. It was the people who make war went out and marched. And as they were marching in faint rank and file around that, they stayed silent. But it was the people of valor. We're going to have Leah lead us here in a minute. Those of you that want to march, you just get in behind her, and on the seventh time, you're going to hear a sound. When you hear that sound, I want you to release your sound, and I want you to release a praise in this house. It doesn't matter if you aren't in the march. You just lift up both of your hands, and you release your praise. I feel like today that when you release your praise by faith, I feel like that God is going to do something supernatural in your life. I don't know what walls are surrounding you. I don't know what outer walls that you are dealing with but I declare this morning that in the name of Jesus walls will fall today in Jesus name. I believe that some of you are going to get a phone call from a lost son or daughter and they're going to tell you I'm back home. I've made things right. I'm where I need to be with the Lord today. I'm I'm okay all because of a wall that fell. I don't know some of you that may be battling depression or you may be battling a sin that you're struggling with but I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus that every stronghold's gonna fall today. It's gonna give itself up and God has given you the city. It belongs to you today in the name of Jesus. Let's pray right quick. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're about to do. God, I know there's some folk in here that's about to praise you on credit. 
God, I know there's some folk in here that ain't seen the promise yet, but they're going to praise you by faith. And in the name of Jesus, they're going to see a victory today. They're going to watch as you move. They're going to watch as you do great things in this house. God, thank you by faith, Holy Ghost, by faith, Holy Ghost, that you're going to do your work today. And Lord, we love you and we praise you for it. God, thank you for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name. If you want to put a mask on, put a mask on and march. If you want to stay socially distanced while you're marching, stay socially distanced. If you can and just want to lift up both hands where you are, you just do it. Leah is going to lead us as we march around this room. She is going to lead us. We're going to do it six times in silence. And then on the seventh time, you're going to hear a sound. And when you hear the sound, I want you to release it with a shout today. Hallelujah. And to lift up your voice. You can just begin to follow all of these that are marching now. And we'll start doing it in silence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
in just a little bit, you're going to hear the horn blow when it blows. I want you to let a sound and a shout go forth in this place. In just the next little bit, you'll hear it.
There you go. Just speak your praise to him. Just speak your praise to him this morning. Just lift up your shout of praise today. Just lift up your sound. Just lift up your sound. The walls have fallen. God's got his hand on you. He's giving you the city in Jesus' name. Lord, we bless you today. We bless you today. Lord, we praise you on credit. You've given us the city. Lord, we praise you today. Oh, you're great today, oh Lord. There is nobody like you in heaven or in earth. Lord, we bless your name today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, all the earth, oh, all the earth shout your praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All the earth will shout. Yes, 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 yes. greatness in this room this morning can you just declare his greatness in this room right now <laughs> Lord we bless your name today Jesus oh we bless your name Jesus we bless your name Jesus your name we bless your name Jesus oh we bless your name today oh we bless your name today hallelujah hallelujah Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 You know, 
this is what we've been praying for. This right here. Because I'm going to tell you, this atmosphere is where lives are changed. I, I believe in this atmosphere is where miracles can happen. Is in this atmosphere right here. When you release a sound, it changes the atmosphere that is around you. When you release a sound, when, when, you, when you speak your praise, all the devils in hell, they go because they say, I can't hang around there because they start talking in that praise language, then he's going to come down. And when he comes down, can't nobody stand in his presence. I don't know about you, but I want him to come down. Anybody else feel like that? Oh, lift up your praise one more time. Just lift up your praise one more time. Oh, Lord, we praise you today. Oh, we praise you today, God. You are worthy, oh, Lord. You are worthy today, oh, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Help me pray right fast.
in the name of Jesus. I, I really, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't want to dismiss, dismiss something like this because I don't want you to think that there's a finality to this. Because this isn't final. This is just a continuation of what God is going to do. This is going to bleed over into every area that you walk in. God's God, I, I feel like somebody needs to hear this. That God has given you everywhere that the sole of your foot's about to touch. God's already given you the land. God's already given it. And all he did this morning was he sent hell a notice that they're awake and they've stopped being quiet. And the sound has shook up the enemy. I don't know what you're coming against this week, but I can tell you this. Then it's already a defeated foe before you got there. It's already defeated before you got there. So this is what we're going to do. If you feel you need to go, you can head out and we'll just dismiss like that. But if you want to stay in worship and you want to just release yourself, you go ahead and do it and we're just going to praise God with you. Amen. 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 Let's just worship and do what you think you need to do today. Lord, we bless you today.